The Silent Shadows In the quiet town of Ravenscroft, nestled between rolling hills and forgotten meadows, I stumbled upon an antique shop that beckoned with an air of forgotten tales. The bell above the entrance tinkled softly as I stepped into a world frozen in time. The shopkeeper, an elderly woman with eyes that held a knowing gleam, handed me an ancient-looking box and uttered words that would unravel a chilling narrative. The box, adorned with faded symbols and worn edges, seemed to resonate with a quiet energy. The shopkeeper's voice lingered in my mind as she spoke of its origins, a relic passed down through generations, harboring the untold story of a once-thriving community now lost to the annals of time. As nightfall cast long shadows across Ravenscroft, curiosity led me to open the box. Inside, I found a collection of handwritten letters, each bearing the weight of a forgotten soul. The words spoke of a place known as Shadow's End, a secluded hamlet surrounded by whispering wheat fields and forgotten gravestones. Intrigued by the mystery woven into the letters, I embarked on a journey to find Shadow's End. The landscape transformed as I ventured beyond the familiar, and the air became heavy with the echoes of lives that once thrived in isolation. The journey led me to a hidden valley, cradled between undulating hills, where the remnants of Shadow's End stood in solemn abandonment. The moon cast an eerie glow on the skeletal remains of houses, their windows staring like vacant eyes into the night. Silence enveloped the hamlet, broken only by the mournful sigh of the wind. The letters hinted at a darkness that consumed the town, a silent entity that lingered in the spaces between forgotten memories. In one of the crumbling houses, I discovered an old diary that chronicled the final days of Shadow's End. The entry spoke of a collective unease, a sense of being watched by unseen eyes that lurked in the shadows. The diary's author, a resident named Clara, described encounters with a silent entity, an elusive presence that seemed to feed on the fears of the townspeople. As I delved deeper into the pages, the narrative took a sinister turn. The entity, known as the Silent Shadow, was said to be a manifestation of the collective guilt and sorrow of the community. It thrived on the fears it provoked, growing stronger with each passing night, until the town succumbed to a pervasive darkness that swallowed every glimmer of hope. In the stillness of Shadow's End, I sensed a subtle shift in the air. Shadows seemed to stir, elongating and intertwining like tendrils reaching out from the forgotten past. The diary hinted at a ritual performed in desperation, a last attempt to banish the silent shadow. The ritual, however, had unintended consequences, sealing the town in a timeless loop where the entity's malevolent influence endured. Haunted by the silent entity's presence, I found myself retracing the steps of those who had faced the silent shadow before me. Each encounter with the entity left me with a chilling sense of unease, a feeling that the shadows themselves harbored long-buried secrets. In the heart of the ghostly hamlet, I uncovered the remnants of the ritual site, a forgotten altar surrounded by wilted flowers and cryptic symbols. As I stood in the moonlit clearing, the air became charged with an otherworldly energy. Shadows coalesced, forming an indistinct figure that seemed to materialize from the very fabric of the night. The silent shadow, a dark silhouette with eyes that gleamed like shards of obsidian, stood before me. Its presence was both palpable and suffocating, a manifestation of the town's collective anguish. As it reached out, tendrils of shadow extended toward me, probing the recesses of my mind. With a surge of determination, I confronted the silent shadow, challenging the darkness that gripped shadow's end. The entity responded with a symphony of whispered fears, echoes of the town's sorrow, regrets, and the silent cries of those who had succumbed to its influence. Yet, in that confrontation, I discovered an unexpected truth, the silent shadow yearned for release, a redemption that could only be achieved by unraveling the town's untold story. Driven by a newfound purpose, I immersed myself in the letters, diaries, and memories of Shadow's End. Each revelation added a layer to the narrative, the unspoken secrets, the unshed tears, and the collective guilt that had given birth to the silent shadow. The entity, once a harbinger of dread, began to wane as the town's story unfolded. As the first light of dawn painted the horizon, the silent shadow dissipated into the ether. 
Shadows that had clung to the hamlet's ruins now retreated, unveiling a town frozen in time. The air felt lighter, and a serene quiet settled over Shadow's End. The loop that bound the town began to unravel, and the whispers of the past were replaced by the gentle rustling of the wind. In that moment of quiet victory, I realized that every town, every community, held stories untold. The silent shadow, once a manifestation of fear, had become a testament to the power of confronting the shadows within. As I left Shadow's End behind, the hamlet embraced a newfound peace, a peace born from acknowledging the silent echoes that lingered in the spaces between forgotten memories. Years later, I sit in the antique shop in Ravenscroft, contemplating the ancient box that started this journey. The silent shadows, once a spectral entity, had found solace in the telling of its tale. The letters, diaries, and memories had become a bridge between the living and the forgotten, proving that sometimes, the most haunting stories are the ones whispered in the silent corners of forgotten towns.